हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू माइंड मैप प्रोग्राम टूडेज टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज पॉली मेटेलिक नोड्यूल्स और पीएमएन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट पॉली मेटेलिक नोड्यूल्स एंड देयर फॉर्मेशन केमिकल एंड फिजिकल प्रॉपर्टीज जोग्राफिकल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन बेनिफिट्स ऑफ पी एम एन एक्सप्लोरेशन टेक्नोलॉजीज एंड इट्स चैलेंजेस इंडिया एंड पॉली मेटेलिक नोड्यूल्स एंड वे फॉरवर्ड सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स डिस्कस अबाउट पॉली मेटेलिक नोड्यूल्स एंड देयर फॉर्मेशन पॉलीमेटेलिक नोड्यूल्स वर डिस्कवर्ड एट द एंड ऑफ द नाइनटीन सेंचुरी इन द कारा सी इन द आर्कटिक ओशन ऑफ साइबेरिया इन एटीन सिक्सटी एट ड्यूरिंग द साइंटिफिक एक्सपीडिशन ऑफ द एच एम एस चैलेंजर एटीन सेवेंटी टू टू सेवेंटी सिक्स दे वर फाउंड टू अकर इन मोस्ट ओशन ऑफ द वर्ल्ड पॉलीमेटेलिक नोड्यूल्स ऑल्सो कॉल्ड नैनगनीज नोड्यूल्स आर रॉक कॉन्क्रीशंस दे आर फॉर्म ऑफ कॉन्सेंट्रिक लेयर्स ऑफ आयरन एंड मैनगनीज हाइड्रोक्साइड्स अराउंड Several theories have been proposed to explain the formation of different types of nodules. In terms of their mode of formation, the nodules are classified into hydrogenous diagenetic and hydrogenous diagenetic. A hydrogenous process in which concretions are formed by slow precipitation of the metallic components from sea water. This is thought to produce nodules with similar iron and manganese content and a relatively high grade of nickel, copper and cobalt. A diagenetic process in which the manganese is remobilized in the sediment column and precipitates at the sediment water interface. Such nodules are rich in manganese but poor in iron and in nickel, copper and cobalt. Now let's discuss about chemical and physical properties of PMNs. Polymetallic nodules are natural polymineral aggregates of ferromanganese hydroxides and clay minerals. From the standpoint of geotechnical research nodules are coarse grained non cohesive formations in terms of the chemical composition they consist of more than 50 elements the chemical composition of nodules varies according to the kind of manganese minerals and the size and characteristics of the core those of economic interest have the following constituents approximately manganese 29% iron 6% silicon 5% aluminum 3% nickel 1.4% copper 1.3% and cobalt 0.25% nickel copper and cobalt are the most valuable geographical distribution nodules have been found in all the oceans and even in lakes however nodules of economic interest are more localized these areas include the center of the north central pacific ocean the peru basin in the southeast pacific ocean and the center of the north indian ocean polymetallic nodules cover vast areas of the abyssal ocean floor and contain significant amounts of critical metals the nodules of greatest commercial interest occur in the clarion clipperton zone that is ccz in the equatorial pacific ocean and in the central indian ocean basin in the ccz polymetallic nodules cover 9 million square kilometer with typical concentrations of 15 kg per square meter the amount of copper contained in the ccz nodules is estimated to be about 20% of that held in global land based reserves benefits of pmns polymetallic nodules contain rare and important elements the metals found in polymetallic nodules are also key to manufacturing low carbon technologies to generate clean energy they can also be used in building the necessary infrastructure to transmit power around the world these metals can be utilized in electric vehicle batteries production a world bank report in 2020 found that the production of minerals like cobalt would increase by nearly 500% by 2050 to meet the growing demand for clean energy technologies over 3 billion tons of them will be needed to deploy the wind solar and geothermal power exploration technologies and its challenges various technological solutions have been devised in the course of exploration for polymetallic nodule deposits since the 1930s eco sounding sonar has been used to investigate the topography of the ocean bottom current mining scenarios are based on a remotely operated crawler harvesting nodules from the sea floor these are pumped up to a production support vessel at the surface Hydraulic mining system is also used to pump up the nodules. All these nodules are around 4000 meter depth so their extraction is also very difficult. Deep sea mining has been a contentious issue in recent years. Greenpeace activist protested against the current research study in the Pacific holding banners reading 
stop deep sea mining according to iucn these deep remote locations can be home to unique species these species have adapted themselves to conditions such as poor oxygen and sunlight high pressure and low temperatures such mining expeditions can make them go extinct even before they are known to science the deep sea's biodiversity and ecology remain poorly understood it is difficult to assess the environmental impact and frame adequate guidelines india and polymetallic nodules the international sea bed authority allots the area for deep sea mining india was the first country to receive the status of a pioneer investor in 1987 it was given an area of about 1.5 lakh square kilometer in the central indian ocean basin for nodule exploration in 2002 india signed a contract with the isa and after complete resource analysis 50% was surrendered now let's discuss about deep ocean mission deep ocean mission is a mission mode project to support the blue economy initiatives of the government of india ministry of earth sciences will be the nodal ministry implementing this multi institutional ambitious mission one of the six components of deep ocean mission is development of technologies for deep sea mining and manned submersible a manned submersible will be developed to carry three people to a depth of 6000 meters in the ocean with suit of scientific sensors and tools an integrated mining system will also be developed for mining polymetallic nodules from 6000 meter depth in the central indian ocean now lastly let's discuss about the way forward deep ocean mining might avoid some of the environmental issues associated with terrestrial mining the development of societies towards a more sustainable future cannot proceed without critical metals deep ocean mining can not only deliver the metals necessary for this transition but can do so with a low carbon footprint the precautionary approach adaptive management and best environmental practices are essential to the development of a polymetallic nodule resource the latest estimate from the isa says it will be commercially viable only if about 3 million tons are mined per year more studies should be carried out to understand how the technology can be scaled up and used efficiently now it's time for the practice questions first of all prelims question consider the following statements one the global ocean commission grants licenses for seabed exploration and mining in international waters two india has received licenses for seabed mineral exploration in international waters three rare earth minerals are present on the sea floor in international waters which of the statements given above are correct 1 and 2 only 2 and 3 only 1 and 3 only or 1 2 and 3 and now mains question what are polymetallic nodules regarding these discuss the significance of deep ocean mission of india and also discuss its challenges so that's all for today stay tuned for the next episode thanks for watching